I can't see you. I can only hear you. All right, now I see you like a small image of you in like a studio setup thing there. Oh, yeah, because that's the, yeah, that's the little thing that, I, yeah, because I think that's the OBS that I'm recording through, so, or something like that. Well, hey, might as well just start it off like, they might as well start. Hey, you know, might as you well. Want start. To start 45 minutes early? Are we going to go yeah, live we, or it's going to be recorded? Might as well. We might as well. Yeah, I'll just. You might as well just. Re- Skype yeah. actually is better quality than StreamYard. Yeah, um, it actually. When, yeah, it actually. I think of his name right now. Don Courtier, mm-hmm. the American that lives in Moscow that interviewed me. Right. When he did that, he did it with Skype, and it worked pretty well. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Yeah, it seems like this is a little bit better. Act. It seems like this is a little bit better. I, you I know what it's... messed up my interview with Lee Camp is that he did it with StreamYard. There was a lot of oh, technical Lee... problems that messed up a lot of the interview. When I did it with Skype, it was a different experience. Oh, wow. So you did it. Oh, so you did it with him? Oh, huh, that's dope. Hey, you know, Gonzalo Lira was uh, rearrested yesterday, right? God, oh, oh, fuck, really? Yeah, he was trying to escape to Hungary on a motorcycle. He was going from Kiev, where he was released from prison, all the way into the western frontier with yeah. Hungary. Right. And I was commenting on Twitter. Yeah. By the way, I'm not the biggest Gonzalo Lira fan. He's very uh, homophobic, very right-wing, very pro-Pinochet. He's uh, Chilean origin. Uh-huh. Uh, but still, he has a right to speak out as a journalist, yeah. and he shouldn't be persecuted by the Zelensky regime. Yeah. So when he was on his way to Hungary, um, I was making a comment on Twitter, and I'm not critical of him publicly. Uh, so that was off the record what I just stated about him. But anyways, uh, when, when when he was uh, escaping to Hungary, um, I said, is he going to survive and be able to write a motorcycle diaries? Right. You know, like Che did. Mm. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, they recaptured him, and it doesn't make any sense to me because how? I mean, why are they going to try to cover up what's already been exposed? He exposed yeah. on Twitter the hundred thousand dollars they stole from him. He's a rich Chilean guy with American citizenship. Oh, but anyways, wow. uh, they stole a hundred thousand dollars from him, and he said they may try to rearrest me to cover this fact up. It's already out on Twitter, and Elon hasn't censored it. It's out publicly, um, yeah. and so. You know, what's the point of rearresting him? Just let him go on to Hungary. They're making themselves look bad. I think the reason why they're rearresting him is because the Biden regime has given him carte blanche. Yeah. Has that's given Zelensky what carte blanche to do whatever he wants. Yeah. So they're like, well, nothing's going to happen to us, so we might as well grab him so we can't keep reporting against us from Hungary. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because even though Hungary's uh, Hungarian government is right wing, um, they're I wouldn't say they're they're allied with Russia. Like Belarus, but they're friendly with Russia. Yeah, I feel like they're in other yeah. EU countries, which is why that he wanted to go to that country and drive through Ukraine to to get there. Right. Yeah, I feel like they. Yeah, I feel like Hungary is a little more. Yeah, they're more like friendly with them. They're trying to put the kibosh on all that bullshit with the bullshit sanctions on Russia and whatnot. So, but yeah, no. So I figured that since you were ever since the Austro-Hungarian Empire split up after the end of World War One, mm. Hungary has mo- has looked more to the east than to the west. Mm. Yeah. So it looks like the audio settings on here are working because because on the OBS it shows the volume and stuff, and when it goes up, that means the volume increases. So that means so it definitely is working. But I know since you requested, I figured out how to download. Sorry, I figured out how to go on Skype without downloading because that puts oh. more space on my. On my computer. Yeah. What I did last time with uh, with Don was I went on my dad's computer because he has Skype loaded on it. Uh, oh. But now I'm on my own computer, which is more convenient. I figured out how to do yeah, it without having to load it. Yeah, it's always yeah. more convenient when you have your own computer, you know. So so whenever I so whenever we do an interview collab, now I know how to do it because yeah, um, we could do it via Skype because I had a good experience with doing a Skype show with yeah, Don. Yeah, so, so you know what? On, I'm, this is better. I'm more you know, willing. Homie, yeah, you know what, homie, this is better. This is better to do it this way because because that way I didn't have to worry about fiddling around with the uh, – I mean, I was trying to do it, so I was, like, trying to test it out, but then it kept saying it won't record here. So I'm like, all right, fuck this. Let me try OBS. I really – By the I, way, do you know why I'm wearing this color shirt? It's not political. Um, so I got invited today to an Italian buffet restaurant. Oh. And I figured, well, if I get spaghetti sauce on my shirt – you're not going to really tell, right? The colors will stay right, yeah. 
And so I actually, think, it's both, right? It can be political, the Red Socialist. Yes. And because uh, I went to an Italian restaurant. Yeah, and I also got the Italian in me, too. I actually am mostly Italian, funny enough. That's actually. Four I don't times. have any Italian heritage, but I have uh, in laws that are Italian. Oh, uh, cool. I have two aunts that are married to guys with uh, with Italian heritage. Mm. Yeah. So I know you wanted to do this pre recorded, so I respect the good. I just do it. And the moment you stepped on, I just I clicked start recording. So I did it like that. So here we are. But it's not live. No, it's not live. It's just recording. Well, you're going to yeah. um, edit will, it up later? And I will upload it after this. Yes, I will be uploading it after this. Because I even yeah, said... You're going to edit it from whenever you tell me, okay, show starting kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I already put up... I already put up I was going to be recording a video anyway. I didn't even say it was going to be a live stream. I already said it was going to be a recorded thing anyway. So I did it like this. And that way it's just... I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's better. But I think in the future, now that I know how to actually use it... Now I figure that uh, we the man in the next one we can do a I can do a stream where we do it now because now I know how to do it I can invite you you can come onto the Skype I hooked up my email with Skype and there we have it so there we have it so here we so here we are well so, by the way when you when you present me um, make sure to put in there besides uh, you know writer journalist activist whatever yeah uh, historian. Uh, yeah, hey, right. I'm also an historian. I'm, I'm trained as an historian. I can research as an historian. Uh, so it's uh -huh. important to mention that as well. I have on my show today, uh, I have on my show today, historian and writer Alex Surez on my show, comrade. So it, this is a pre recorded video that I am. You got to state it again, my friend, because my last name is Suarez, like oh. Juarez, Mexico. Oh, Suarez, yeah. Why did I say Suarez? Blech. Just replacing the J with the Ness. That's why you remember. Suarez, okay. So yeah, it's a very Spanish name. So it's like a W. Okay, so obviously I want to yeah, do everything U I can. Yeah, replaces the W in Spanish. Right, yeah. So, so Alex Suarez. So I got Alex Suarez on here, everybody, and I'm very glad to because he's a comrade of Dust James, and Dust James is one of my comrades. He's been a fan of... Ours for for he's been a fan of my he's been a fan of mine for a long time and getting to talk with him and Alex uh, back a few months ago was also really cool too so doing this is really cool too and I'm glad I was able to figure all that stuff out so I'm glad that I was I'm glad that I was able to figure all that out so so now um, I want to ask so so some one of the biggest things I wanted to ask you is is how did you meet Lee Camp because you're the first person I've ever met that knows Lee Camp someone that I'm a fan of so you know him and you know Max Blumenthal correct yeah I actually uh, earlier today uh, tweeted back at Max I've been tweeting at Max lately he, he usually ignores me unlike Lee I have much better oh. relations with Lee oh, um, okay. but uh, you know Max was complaining that uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. wouldn't debate him. Oh, and, yeah, um, yeah. I said, hey, Max, you didn't want to debate me. Because <laughs> what ended up happening was Caleb debated me instead because I challenged Max to a debate um, on the uh, Trotsky-Stalin question. But, uh, you know, yesterday I tweeted at Max as well because he was uh, complaining. I think it was yesterday. He was complaining about this rabbi. I think it's Rabbi Shkumi. Oh. Who's a very right wing, you know, Zionist uh, fanatic, oh. you could say. Oh. Oh, um, and, you know, he was complaining about Shkumi's association with Bobby Kennedy Jr. Right. And I said, Max, what about our conversation about Yadira and her connection to, to Rabbi Shkumi? Yeah. Uh, you like Yadira. You said it was just because she's religious. So, you know, I kind of, um, I don't want to say, you know, make punches at Max, but I kind of question Max. In certain yeah, things. Mean, so our relationship, you know, I've met him a few times as well, has been more adversarial. Now with Lee, that's different. You feel like Lee's more uh, because Lee is less divisive than Max. Uh, he's more humorous and we tend to agree oh. more on things, Lee and I. So we get along better. Huh. Hmm. We get that T ready. Hmm. Details, details. Both of them I connected with through the Venezuelan actions at the embassy in twenty nineteen. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, because one thing is you're a supporter of theirs, and they might look at your tweets here or there. Another thing is when you're face to face with them in actions, and they see you in action, then right. they have more respect for you, and they can keep in touch with you. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's. Uh, I didn't know that he was. It was more adversarial. Uh, yeah. So I knew that he was. He well, he you know, Max has had positions that, and I've been very vocal about this. 
that I strongly disagree with. Right. I respect his journalism. I respect his advocacy for Venezuela. Oh yeah. Um, but you know, he's he and his wife Anya, uh, they Anya. work with the Miser Caucus, who's the most fascistic, racist element of the Libertarian Party. Now controls the party. Um, in order to appease to them, they've said transphobic things publicly. Um, and these are things that Lee does not take part in. Yeah, um, the I'm actually, do. I'm actually more. Uh, I only ever been in touch with Ben Norton once. Oh, but I'm yeah. much more friendly or open to if you want to talk about personalities with uh, Ben Norton. Oh yeah, um, than yeah I am with I Max. Love- and you know, Ben Norton left the Gray Zone for various right. reasons. I'm not going to say I have any inside knowledge of the exact reasons. Yeah, but uh, but I have a lot of respect for Ben, and Ben actually lives in Latin America. Yeah, he lives, yeah, in, he lives in Nicaragua. And Ben was just with a comrade of mine who was with me in Venezuela, Dan Kovalik. I'm sure you heard of him. Yeah. Dan I've heard and of Ben him. were together in Nicaragua, and I was like, I want to go next time. And Dan said mm, my regards right. to, to Ben. But Ben's oh. very busy. Yeah. But I'd no. love to work with him as well. I've worked with Dan on stuff. Yeah, Ben Norton is awesome. I'm more I'm a big fan of this channel. I've been watching him for a long time. I actually been I think I've been watching him since like 2018, 2019, I think. That might have been back when he was on the gray zone. Yeah, I think it was when he was on the gray zone. And then funny enough, I did come across Lee Camp when I back in like 2014 or 15. I recognized his show Redacted Tonight, and then I didn't even remember it until until re until you know last year when I heard that it got shut down because of the fucking bullshit. Well, it, in January of 2020, so this is uh, just before COVID, mm. I was in the Redacted Tonight studios in the front row. Ooh. And back then, Lee was very accessible, so we would hang out at a bar afterwards and have some oh, drinks wow. together. Um, by then, Lee was taking me seriously, not only because he saw me in actions defending Medea Benjamin at the Venezuelan embassy from the right. squalid those, the squalid ones, the right-wing Venezuelans that were there that were attacking us. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. But also because yeah. he knew I was part of a film project, which later uh, was not able to be completed mm. for COVID and the death of Kevin Z's and other reasons, because Kevin Z's, of course, was a big supporter. Yeah, uh, but you know, I, I, it culminated into a book that was published post mortem, so, so shortly after Kevin's passing, mm. uh, where Kevin's elder son Alex Z wrote the forward called "Embassy Protectors." So instead of the film being uh, completed, uh, I wrote a book, and that's actually one of my two books that was translated to Spanish. The other oh, one was the one I published last year, The Diplomat, about the Alex Saab case, Ambassador Alex Saab. Oh yeah, that and shit that um, this time. year I published a book that I want to talk to you about which is my second fiction ever, uh, which is called If Che Won, mm. Alternative History. I actually want to physically show it to you as well. I believe I have it in the other room. I'm in the process of getting it translated to Spanish. Bro, I will definitely buy I will definitely buy that. I am really interested to hear what, what you've written in there. I really would love to hear that because I'd love to hear all that stuff that you got in there. Because well, let me get it. Give me a moment to go look for the book. I'll be right back. Okay, no problem. Because I actually have food in the oven I got to go get. So I will actually just go do that. So, all right. See, so, yeah, everybody, this is Comrade Alex, uh, Alex Suarez that we're having here on here today. So I'm doing a little pre record, as, as I mentioned earlier. So, which, um, which I'm, which I'm honored to have on here. And yeah, definitely, Skype is definitely. So I'm sure Alex and I are going to have a lot to talk about, especially um, especially the stuff about Russia and Ukraine and the stuff going on in Latin America. We're definitely because we're both socialists, so so we both are going to have a lot to talk about here. So it might be an hour, it might be a little longer. I might want to go a little longer, but like I said, I I'll make it any time for for brother Alex for sure. So I think he's coming back with his with his book. Hang on. Oh, I got to turn off. Yeah. This is just a good. This is a good way to to do it. So now I'll know what to do in the future. I was able to share it with OBS. I was able to do it here. I was able to do it there. So.
All right. He, I think he is. I'm a bit disorganized today, so I can't find oh, it, but I do have oh, no, I do have this right. one here. The, the diplomat. All right, I'm going to increase the screen a little bit and have it. The diplomat by Alex. Or, wow, that's cool. That's a cool one. What is yeah, that? so my author name that you can find on Amazon, in, in case people get um, confused, oh, is okay. Al R. Suarez, middle initial R without a period. Okay. Or Suarez, as it's pronounced in Spanish. Suarez, okay. That's and, cool. um, you know, uh, I can uh, look up on my computer quotes from the new one, since I don't have the physical book here with me. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of pictures also. I think you saw one of the interviews I did about it, yeah. uh, you know, of Che and Bolivia and all that. Oh. Um, it's important also um, right. to, to tell you who I dedicated the book to. There's two individuals I dedicated it to. That gives you an idea of what influenced the book, what the book's about. Oh. So one of the people I interviewed the book to was Ciro Bustos, who's a largely misunderstood uh, Argentine revolutionary. Oh. He met Che in Cuba after the triumph of the uh, Cuban Revolution. Although Che believed the revolution continued even after their victory. Um, and he yeah. worked with Massetti, Jorge Massetti, oh. in Salta, in the north of Argentina, in a guerrilla operation that failed. And Ciro Bustos was one of the few survivors of that. Huh. So later, he was with Che in Bolivia. Huh. And then he was captured with the French uh, journalist Register Bray, and the rest is history. Yeah. But, um, oh, may he rest. He wrote a book that was recently translated to English. Um, it's called El Che Quereverte, or Che Wants to See You. Um, and it really puts things into perspective of what happened in Bolivia. Yeah, um, and the second person I um, dedicated the book to I was actually the uh, young brother uh, of Che, who's still living in Argentina, Juan Guevara. Oh. And Juan also wrote a book that was translated to English. Uh, I read the Spanish one. Uh, it's a biography not only of his brother, but of himself. Uh, oh. And it really puts things into perspective about Che as well. Interesting thing to note is that Juan Guevara and his family, Chase family, fled to Cuba huh. when the fascist regime took over. Oh, yes. And then Juan Guevara, just like his brother, left his wife and, and, and child behind in Cuba. Damn. Um, and uh, I think he only had one child. He has a nephew who's right wing, unfortunately. But Juan Guevara is very left wing, like his brother. Hmm. Uh, and Che had several children, uh, six, one illegitimate. But anyways, that that's not so much in the book. Um, I hate that term to be legitimate. Out of out of out of wedlock, you could say. Right. Yeah. Uh, that was that's in Cuba. Twenty like children that. as well. But um, uh, and then he had a child from his first marriage as well. So he had four children with his second Cuban wife, and those children still live in Cuba. Right. Uh, but uh, Juan Guevara uh, returned to Argentina to join the guerrilla struggle in the nineteen seventies. Oh yes. And he was handing out pamphlets, and he got arrested. But he was lucky mm. uh, because he was arrested during the Isabel Perón regime. Now, let me explain how Isabel Perón came to power oh, and the yeah. fascists that were even more right wing than her that came to power after that. And where did had that he been arrested from? a little bit after that, he could have very easily been executed. Oh, and where did that come um, to power? In what what country did that come to power in? I'm talking only about Argentina right now. Oh, you're talking about Argentina. So you've probably heard of Evita Perón and Juan Perón, right? The very famous, uh, you know, uh, political family. Uh, Juan, the husband, Evita, the wife. So I, Evita died yeah, I have heard of very that, young. Yeah. She yeah. was the more, you know, working class, more left-leaning of the oh, Perones. Yes, yeah. Juan Perón was kind of a center-left leader, populist. Yeah, kind of like an Alberto. Exile for nearly 20 years. What was that? Kind of more like an Alberto Fernandez kind of person, like the one in Argentina. Today. Well, the type of Peronism that's Alberto Fernandez is more like Juan Peron. That's correct. Yeah. The type of Peronism that Cristina Fernandez is part of is more like Evita Peron. Oh. Um, but anyways, uh, Juan Peron went into exile uh, for nearly 20 years. Um, didn't return to Argentina until the 70s. Uh, you know, I think late 70s, something like that. 
Um, he was in exile in Spain, in Franco, Spain. Oh, um, right. He actually met Che uh, while in exile as well. And that's mentioned in the book. Hmm. But uh, Juan Guevara, uh, you know, was imprisoned. Oh, yeah. So let me tell you how Isabella uh, Perón got to power. Yeah, I'd like to hear um, about so that. Juan Perón was very old by the time he returned to Argentina and returned to power. Right. So he died soon after. Right. And then his second wife, who was very right wing, oh. Isabel Perón, took over. And that's the time where Che's brother was captured. Oh, oh um, yeah. And then a full killed, yeah. fascist junta got in, and Videla got in, and and those guys could have very easily executed Juan Perón. But because Juan Perón was convicted under the Perón regime, Isabel Perón regime, uh, he didn't get the death penalty. Oh. He came close to, though, it's in the book. Um, but you see a lot about Che. Uh, for example, I always, I'll tell you a couple of things I learned from them too and how it influenced the book. Um, I, I always thought, because you know, of the different positions Che had, they were very prestigious positions in the Cuban government, diplomat, minister of industries, uh, head of the Cuban bank, uh, right? So uh, of all those positions, do you know how much he raised his salary? How much his promotion was? How much? Yeah, how much? I don't read too much into that, but what what was the promotion? Zero, zero. He refused. So I always thought that refused. he always took the. I wow. always thought that he always took the salary of a, of a commandante of a commander in the Cuban military and refused all other salaries. He only do these positions as voluntary because he believed that money belonged to the Cuban people. He was principal. He wasn't in it for the money or the power. Mm. But I was wrong because when I read the brother's book. He actually only ever took the salary of a soldier, of a wow. simple soldier, a man with a, with a family and everything. Um, so when he was actually given, and this is not shown in the Benicio Toro film, no dissing to it, it was a good film, but there was a lot of omissions. So when he was given, and it's shown in the film, the, the scene where, where Fidel offers Che to be a commander. Oh. He's a sign off as commander. You've been promoted. Uh, what, this, what they don't show is that Che said, you know, Fidel, I don't want to have a raise in salary. I want to. I want to remain with the salary of a simple soldier. And throughout his political, I don't want to say career, but throughout his political participation, right. he could say his career wasn't paid. But throughout his political participation in the Cuban government, he could have had large sums of money if he wanted. He refused, and that just shows the incredible principles of Che. Yeah, now, something really that I does. learned from Sierra Bustos. What's that? I, oh, I said yeah. It really does. It really does show Actually, yeah. a lot of humanity. So something that I learned from Sierra Bustos. Something that's else is omitted from the Benicio del Toro film is you might remember. I don't know if you watched it in Spanish with English subtitles. Did you see the Che one and two, the films with uh, Benicio del Toro? No, I haven't seen that. But I but that that's something I definitely have to put on my, my list. My favorite of the two is Part Two. Oh, so part because two. that shows Che in South America, in Bolivia, in his prime. Oh, um, and so and I say prime politically, not necessarily physically. He had asthma. He was in his late 30s by the time he went to Bolivia. Damn. He always had asthma, though, from his childhood. That's awesome. uh, but uh, I would say he was, he was prime politically. He was very unifying, but there was too many odds against him. He wasn't successful. So I'm showing what would have happened if he was successful. Um, so anyways, there's a scene in the, in the film, um, and, you know, it shows Che when he's saying goodbye to Ciro Bustos before he's captured. He's trying to return to Argentina. Uh, so he's saying goodbye to Ciro Bustos in Bolivia, and uh, he tells Ciro, Si te capturan, niega mi presencia a toda costa, pero si ya saben de mi existencia, admito, admito mi, mi existencia con todo orgullo. So the first part of that is Che telling Ciro, if they capture you, deny my presence at all costs. That's the part that they show in the film. The second sentence, which is very important, that's in the Cito's book, which I believe is true, hmm. uh, is where Chase says, but if they already know about my existence in Bolivia, they can go ahead and admit, admit my existence here with all your pride. Wow. Scare them, you know? And so you can't say that's snitching. That's why he's misunderstood. They say he was snitched on Che. They yeah. already knew. They had photographs. They they knew. They had CIA there. Yeah. You know, they were training the Rangers. There was even a Nazi involved. Uh, 
you know, escape from Europe, Klaus Barbie, he was advising the Rangers, they had all the support from the West. And so they knew by then, 1967, that was the year Che died, Che was about a year in Bolivia, uh, that he was there. Um, and something else, and it was more Regis de Bray talking than Cito Bustos. Uh, remember, they were both captured. Right. Um, but uh, something else uh, that's unfair is, and then they show it in the movie, but they don't explain it. Um, the myth is, the myth is that Cito Bustos drew depictions of the guerrillas and gave them away to the Bolivian authorities. Not true. All those drawings were fake images. Oh, so they were like a hoax. Was it yeah, like a hoax? Yeah, he was distracting the Bolivian authorities because if you actually compare the photographs of the guerrillas with the drawings that he was making up, they weren't the same people. Oh, So that's not snitching. And, but yeah. anyways, uh, Cito went to Europe and was silent for a long time. And then uh, John Anderson, who wrote the biography of Che, caught up to him oh. and uh, helped convince him to write that book so we could find out the truth. Huh. And Cito Bustos was invited to China after he left Cuba, and he regretted that. Not because he didn't like going to China, but because he got to Bolivia and it was too late. He said, I wish I got to Bolivia earlier. But basically, the book is saying, you know, had he arrived at a different point, had he not been captured, had he got back to Argentina, had certain things been set in motion with uh, uh, Tanya, uh, the female guerrilla that was trying to infiltrate the Barriento circles, had those, those operations been successful, because they were in battle defeating Barrientos troops, the regime in Bolivia, at hmm. least at the beginning. Had, had things been different, uh, it could have been successful and not only helped spread revolution within Bolivia, where you have to wait decades later for Evan Morales to get to power. But you had neighboring Peru, the Velasco government that rose up, which was a leftist government at that time. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, of course, Argentina implications there as well. As you know, Bolivia borders both Argentina and Peru. It's in the middle. Oh, yeah, it's right. country strategically, and it's named after... Sandwiched in between. Venezuelan liberator, yeah, Boulevard, who liberated all those countries, including Peru. I actually saw the grave site when I went to... Uh, not Bolivia. When I went to... I've been to Peru, not Bolivia. When I went to Venezuela two years ago. It was right. Oh, yeah, tell day, me more about the that. The same day that I went to see the Chavez grave site. They also took us to the Boulevard grave site. Wow. Very important. Very because I was there in the, as the condition of a regional election observer among the 500 internationals, one of the few Americans able to go. Oh, and in part also because of the actions that we took part in in 2019 at the Venezuelan embassy, as I was mentioning earlier. Hmm. Yeah, when you went there, didn't you say when you were le you when you came back, you were like you were like treated terribly by people? Were, didn't you say you were heckled or something or you were? No, what happened was I was showing an image from 2017. Oh, uh, so that was before 2021. Uh, when I was taking part in actions in Miami, I actually went once in Miami with my chase shirt when Trump was coming to visit. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, in 2017, I gave a speech at the Boulevard statue in downtown Miami. Well, that's awesome. And we had a giant banner that had Maduro on it, and it was, you know, pro oh, Venezuela. Yeah. <laughs> and that's while awesome. I was giving him a speech, my father had to, to, st to tell this lady to stop yelling at me because she just passed by and saw us speaking and, and tried to heckle me. Uh, but the Venezuelans have known of my actions, you know, uh, right. when I went to the Alex Saab trial, I confronted a so-called journalist there outside and filmed him and he had escaped Venezuela to Colombia. Oh, he yeah. was wanted by Venezuelan authorities, uh, uh, for trying to extort, uh, Alex Saab. Um, and when Santos took over in Colombia, who was more friendly to Maduro, he fled to Miami and I caught up with him. He had defamed me in the past and I was filming him because you have to, you have to show bravery in the face of evil, in the face yes. of empire. Oh yes, you um, definitely do. When, when, whenever the, whenever the, the terrorists in the CIA, whenever they're, whenever they're there, you know, you always got to show that. Because actually, funny enough, one of my good friends that I saw yesterday was actually, he's actually funny enough, he's actually like center right, I think, but he's very, very like anti-war and imperialism. He even says the CIA should just be done away with because there, there is no use for the CIA whatsoever. I mean, what do they do other than terrorize these nations? that just want to be independent and they want to be free of us hegemony that's all they want to do so the so the just the the this the, the cia just disgusts me with the ship and when i was co-hosting the uh earlier this summer the uh was in may uh, after we came back from dc uh yeah, I was co-hosting the uh, Rage Against Imperialism rally. Oh Those yeah, yeah. Guys, tell me, yeah, tell me more about that. Gainesville. In my speech, I said it is the it was precisely the moment when the imperialists try to intimidate us 
yeah. that we must show the most bravery. And what I, was I talking about? I, I was talking about our comrades in St. Pete, yeah. Florida, and other parts of the country of Uhuru. Because oh, we're in a moment in history where the full force of the FBI is coming down on our comrades because of how they think, the crime of thought. There's not one shred of evidence. There's not even a claim in the indictment, but there's not one shred of evidence that they received a dime from the Russians. Why are the Uhuru being called agents of Russia? Because of their opinions. And, be, and they're trying to intimidate, in particular, the African-American, you know, progressive or leftist community in the United States, using Uhuru as an example, just as they're trying to use Alex Saab, despite his oh, yeah. abundance of evidence of his diplomatic community, to say, hey, if you're working for anti-imperialist government like Venezuela, yeah. you're defying U.S. sanctions and you're finding ways to feed your people and give them medicine. We're going to torture you, put you on an island and send you to Miami on a trumped up charge. And that's happening with Alex Saab, much like with Assange for the act of yeah. journalism. Supposedly work this is the lawlessness, the lawfare. I'm sure you're familiar with that term and I can yeah. describe it if you like. But this is the lawlessness, yes, lawlessness. of the U.S. empire in decline. Absolutely. And isn't it so hypocritical because they're going after Alex Saab for violating U.S. sanctions and they say that, oh, he's like, he's going and befriending this dictator, right, that they like to say. But then meanwhile, they use dictatorial tactics against him. So we got to fight dictatorship with dictatorship. That's basically what it is. And for those that say, don't worry about these sanctions, they'll never do it against American citizens. What happened with Uhuru? Uhuru's bank accounts were frozen what because of how they think. Exactly. These are American citizens. We cannot tolerate this. They're doing sanctions against their own people here, yes. not just against Venezuela. Oh yeah, they're, they're doing against. They're, they're doing it domestically and globally. Like that's basically what. Well, that's um. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. It's um. They're doing it against them, but they're also they were doing it not just. They're doing it to a Venezuela. He's a diplomat, right? Is Alex Saab? He's a diplomat, correct? I met his wife in Venezuela. Oh, okay. And I made a promise to her and the Venezuelan people. From the state where he's kidnapped here in Florida, I'm going to do all I can for him to be free. I've gone to all the hearings, uh, the pre-trials. I've Good driven you, down man. there uh, because we need to expose this. And this is why I wrote this book in multiple language. Damn and right. I wrote this new fiction also to inspire uh, Americans that are aware of Chad. Because there's even Americans out there that are so ignorant about Venezuela. Oh, yeah. And they'll say, that. oh, I love Che, but I don't have nothing to do with that Maduro dictator. Oh, no, like, what? they're more democratic than us. Thank and I have the authority to say this because you. I witnessed their elections firsthand. Thank you. And and you want to know something? I, I always say this. I say this on my stream. You know, you, you know me. I, you know how my, my character is on stream and on videos. But like I, I say the same thing. I say there are so many fucking people that are so ignorant about Venezuela, Cuba, because they all believe what the fucking media is saying that they're just they're, they're bad, evil dictatorships. And, and by the way, people that are so pro vaccines support Biden's policy of keeping Cuba on the terrorist watch list. Yep. Uh, yeah. that list that Trump had put them on, mm -hmm. not Obama. And and um, you know, these Americans that are so pro vaccine. They have no problem when Biden prevented Cuban citizens from getting access uh, to, 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 to needles. Right, correct. And who came in to save them? The evil Russians, right? The so-called evil Russians, Putin. They mm -hmm. sent the, the, the needles that they needed to have their vaccines. Yeah. And what did the Cubans did in, do in their resourcefulness? They invented their own vaccines. Exactly. Just as during the 90s in a special period when the exactly. Soviet fell and they lost that support, they invented a lung cancer vaccine, basically a cure yep. for lung cancer. They smoke cigars. They live longer than us. They're under sanctions as well. They have a socialist system. Yep. Um, you know, and these are lung cancer vaccines that us Americans can't get. And under a discussion. More of us die from lung cancer okay. than the Cubans. So the embargo affects us as well and our freedom of movement, right? Oh, it does. Because under Trump, and I believe it's still true under Biden, you can't fly to certain cities in Cuba. Yeah, like you, you can't, can't go to certain places. Uh, if I wanted to fly directly, for example, to Santa Clara, where Che had his triumph, where Che's buried now. They found his body 30 years later in Bolivia. Um, I can't do that. I have to go into Havana, and, you know, logistically it's harder. And so why are these all these obstacles to Americans, knowing the Cuban example, knowing the Venezuelan example, where the diplomatic relations are up to as well? Because once we know the truth of, of, of socialism yep. and how it rises up oppressed nations, how it rises up the exactly. working class, we're going to want to yes. implement that here at home. So these sanctions, exactly. we're victims of it as well because it's used to help keep us ignorant and manipulated right. by, the, by the fake news, by the propaganda system. Mm -hmm. That's just it, man. 
that is just in a obviously i'm not gonna be stuffing my i'm just gonna be taking a little bite here and there but um <laughs> but yeah no that's what that's what they do they want to act like socialism is so bad and evil and i've been saying this forever because because as if capitalism is doing us any good like as if they're doing like are they, like do you think capitalism in china resulted in 800 million people yeah uh, you think that's leaving the, extreme right? poverty? It was because of the socialism that's still there, the state intervention. You want to know what's we funny? We have way less people in extreme poverty here in the United States in our capitalist yeah. system than are getting help. More homeless it's because of the socialism that exists in China that that's going on. I'm but sorry, our propaganda West. system cries, you know, oppression against Uyghurs. Uyghurs could have more children than the Han Chinese. Oh they God. give a lot of rights to the minorities in China. Dude. So this is part of the propaganda system. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I like I said. I'm, I say, I say Uyghur hoax, Uyghur hoax all the goddamn, all goddamn time. time. I say it all I the time it all that, that, it is, that it is a 100% hoax. Hang on. Do you know where Lee Camp just came back from? He came back from when China. When he interviewed me? Yeah, he went to China. He went to China. He had just came back from Not China. Absolutely. And yeah. the woman who invited him there, I believe it was for her birthday, um, she's done a lot of good work in Uyghur. She actually goes into Uyghur territory mm. and shows the, the boom there and, you know, how they lived before in their markets and, and their the boom Uyghurs and the only investment from the thought. Chinese government but, yeah. in these communities. Yeah, but yeah. as if the U.S. fucking cares about Muslims. Now all of a sudden we care about Muslims being persecuted in China, right? We care so much about Muslims in China, Uyghur Muslims in China. How many Muslims is the U.S. government? The only time the United States military intervened yeah. to defend Muslims and they're really doing it just to break up Yugoslavia. You know that. Because yeah, they were united right, under Tito. And it's under, all about the China. Yeah. But, but like the only true. time that they've ever defended Muslims militarily were white Muslims. Yeah. Bosnians. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And the only time the ICC, who last I heard still has an arrest warrant against one of Gaddafi's son, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, the last time the ICC uh, convicted a European was Milosevic. And he, he died from a heart attack in the docks before uh, they show? could yeah. convict him, before they could try him. And so they've, they've never gone after a white person in the ICC. Of course they, they always have, have to go after Africans. No. And speaking of Africa, yeah. you have three African nations that have risen up. This is direct legacy of Che. You know, Niger. Che was in the Congo. The Cubans yep. were in Angola. We know this. Yep. Um, and, and that's why Mandela thanked them. Mandela thanked the Cubans when he got yeah, out. Yeah, Nelson they Mandela them said that. South Africa. That's indisputable. But uh -oh. you have right now Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. And Niger, yep. That have risen up they against the French imperialists. Recently. And do you know what Nigeria did yesterday? Yeah, the, the, weren't they like right entrenching now. on their borders? Nigeria cut their electricity to Niger. Yeah, they did that. In order that. to please the French. In yeah, order to, to appeal the French, to appeal the fucking French fire. bastards. Exactly, because Niger kicked the fucking French imperialists out. Because they because they said that. And now, what do, who do you think they're blaming? They're blaming Russia now. Of course they're blaming Russia. <laughs> They're you know why? Blaming. Because recently these leaders went to St. Petersburg, Russia. They're blaming fucking. Uh, and they came back, you know, in, in, you know, enthused by Putin and others. I'm not saying Putin's the same, but he's definitely anti imperialist in that regard in Africa, Latin yeah. America. And so they came back yeah. enthused. And so they're blaming Russia for everything, which is ridiculous. I mean, you remember in 2020, the Black Lives Matter protests I took part in. I got tear gas at the time. Yeah. Um, they're blaming it on Maduro. They and said, I, said that. I wish, they said I wish that Maduro that. had enough I money to help that. us. But <laughs> that's just not what's going on here. Um, I didn't even know that until you told me that. Oh, yeah. They blame Maduro on the Black Lives Matter protests. I can show you articles. Trump, Trump's administration well, meanwhile, blamed, blamed at that time yeah. Maduro. He said Maduro was influenced Black Lives Matter. Trump was doing and the guess same what? thing. He has a point. I'm not going to say financially. But he has a point because when I went to Caracas and I went to some of the voting booths, they had Black Lives Matter written on it. And they had uh, some oh, African-American activists, yeah. some of them coming from Canada as well, that came down as regional election observers. And also, I don't want you to think the old regional election observers were leftists. Some of them were from the Carter Center, centrists from the EU. Yeah, some of them were from the opposition. Yeah. So there was a mixed bag of observers, but we all approved the elections there. There's something else I want to get into is the yeah, hypocrisy of the EU because we mentioned Macron earlier. Um, you know, recently, I Venezuela, a lot of people don't understand the context. I'll explain the context. I understand the Venezuelan thinking. I told a lot of context there. And I'm fluent in Spanish. So, well, you probably could tell earlier when I was uh, citing Che, I flew to Spanish. Correct. I just, yeah, I didn't no, just memorize that. You know, if you're fluent, it's, it's easier. But anyways, uh, uh, the EU, okay, not the EU, Venezuela recently said we do not want the EU to observe our presidential elections next year, which I'm probably going to go through, by the way. I'm in the process of setting that up, renewing my passport. But anyways, um, you know, when 
when uh, I think it was uh, Jorge Rodriguez, he's the head of the right. uh, Cuban National Assembly. Mm-hmm. Him and a couple other officials had recently announced we do not want the EU to observe our presidential elections next year. You I don't know why? Blame him. I don't blame Machado, him. who's the female version of Guaido, a Nazi. Oh, yeah. She is a terrible traitor who's wanted an invasion and sanctions against her own country. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Machado. Kinda Machado, like they that. said that she is 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 not uh, valid to run, and if it, it was a dictatorship, she'd be lined up and shot. By the way, yeah, or for she'd all the treason that she's done. But uh, yeah. and in the United States, she'd be sent to Guantanamo. We know that uh, to be tortured. But the point is, you know, because Machado, the Nazi, couldn't run. Oh, the EU condemned us. Of course, yeah. give me a break. And they're doing this at a time the where the right. nation's yeah. on fire, and he's meddling in Africa with Nigeria right now. Not only that, they're doing it while Germany knows <laughs> that the United States was responsible for blowing up their infrastructure. This yeah, was the blowing up the fucking that Nord they Stream. built. Nord Stream 1 and 2. There's only one left. The, 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 the pipeline they built with the Russians. Mm. And, 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 and are there still military bases in Latin America? Very few. Several of them were removed. For example, Three Hills in Panama back in the 70s, you get rid of them. There's still U.S. bases in Germany, and they can still do nothing about the blowing up of their own Yeah, because they can't do nothing wrong. So who are them to talk about Latin America, who has a more independent foreign policy, who are they more are so democratic than the Europeans? They are so independent, and it's great to see. Now, now this Venezuelan, that you were de- that, that one that you were describing as a traitor and as a Nazi or not, she, she Machado. Like, yeah. uh, I forget her first name, but her name's Machado, yeah. Machado. She sounds like Janina Nez in Bolivia. It's, it sounds very similar to what Janina Nez in Bolivia. And Janina Nez, every time I hear her name, I laugh because she's behind bars now. This is great. I am so they, they, happy they, she's Bolivia, they bars. know how to deal with traitors that work with the U.S. Empire. Oh, fuck I'll it. tell you fuck that. yeah. She deserves it. She, she tried to escape the Bolsonaro's Brazil, and she hid under a bed. She, she was such a coward when she, when she was on the border town trying to go over to Brazil. They caught her, and she was trying to hide under the bed when they arrested her. You know the other thing? <laughs> Pathetic. Yeah, you know the other thing? You know the other thing? I, there was, I did, I've did. i done a lot of work on Bolivia and other stuff, but I found out that Jim Bolsonaro was definitely hiding her because he's a fucking right wing. He was here. He was two hours from driving from here. He was in Orlando. He fled to Orlando for a while, but he's back in Brazil now. I don't know why he's not behind bars. They're calling him a dictator. If he was dictator, he would have shot Bolsonaro already or at least arrested him. I mean, would Bolsonaro, would Bolsonaro have deserved it? But Guado, they let Guado go to Miami. Guado should be fucking executed. And then, and then, and you know something funny? Joe Biden considered him president. He considered him president of Venezuela. Not just Trump. That win. proves that the Democrats and Republicans have the same, same imperialist agenda. Thank you. They are so they're exactly. They are no different than each other. Are you familiar with lawfare and how lawfare was used by both uh, Biden and Trump regimes against Alex Saab? How? I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Oh, I said, wait, were you, um, was that a question? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm asking you, are you familiar with the political term lawfare and how it's used? Lawfare. Sounds kind of familiar, yeah. I'll be happy to describe it for you okay. and your listeners. So yeah, lawfare is a combination between the words warfare and the law. Right, right. And actually, even though it stems from English, if you go to Caracas and you say, eso es un lawfare, which means mm. this is the lawfare, they'll understand. Oh, As a matter of fact, true. there's a lot of Spanish speakers now that have been victim of the U.S. empire that n- better understand the word lawfare than, than English-speaking Americans. Oh, yeah. But yeah. lawfare is what's been used against Alex Saab. And so basically it's not a prosecution. It's a persecution under the guise of yeah. the law. Yeah. Like pers- and they've been doing yeah. it against Assange. They've been doing it against, in the last few years, countless activists and those that are speaking out and exposing uh, the imperialist agenda. Oh, yeah. And actually, in some ways, Biden is worse than Trump. We know this. And I'll oh, tell yeah. you why. Foreign policy, not only Ukraine. Let's take out Ukraine out of the equation because we're talking about Latin America. I don't want to get off too off topic. Soon after I went we to Venezuela, that, there was elections in Nicaragua. And so for the act of democracy, Biden retaliated by making more sanctions against Nicaragua than Even existed worse. under Trump. Yep. Even worse. Even worse. Stepped it up like how— yeah, like I'm, I'm, supporting, I'm supporting Cornel West, by the way. Me as well. Yep. And Same it's not that like all the Greens, but he represents the more revolutionary working class faction of the Greens. Because RFK Jr. fucking sold out to the Zionist entities. I know. Rabbi Shkumi, I mentioned earlier. It took Jimmy Dore a long time to fucking call him out. I was a little disappointed about that, which I was kind of happy to say. 
I was kind of happy. Well, my theory is that Dor gave into pressure from Max. Remember, right. Max is Jewish. Uh, but be. Max was outraged because I think even Max supported RFK Jr. in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, th that, that bait never ensued. But I would like to still debate Max, you know, oh, maybe yeah. over Trotsky Stalin or over other issues. Although yeah. Max and I agree on a lot of stuff, including yeah. Venezuela. I mean, here's the thing, bro. You 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 might you might not agree with some things on me, and that's okay. But you, I know you admire me for the anti-imperialist work that I do. I, I know that. So. I didn't hear what you said. What about anti-imperialist work? I said that you might admire me for my anti-imperialist work and might not agree with everything I say either. And then that's okay. But yeah, it seems like that. But I, I believe in congenial, respectful debate. Where you can find common ground, mm -hmm. uh, because you you can look it up. My interview, not interview, my um, my debate with Caleb K Caleb Moffin was very respectful at the time. This is this is pre scandal. This was back like three years ago. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, I believe in debates like that that can be respectful. Right. That makes sense. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was a fan of RFK back in back in the day. I, I know I was defending him, like I was defending him against like other shit lips and stuff like that. But I know that. Um, well, you know what really pissed me off was when DWS, Debbie Washerman Schultz, who was you know head of, basically head of the Clinton mob in South Florida, uh, was attacking RFK Jr., calling him anti-Semitic. Yeah, I yeah. didn't agree with it. I didn't agree with Bobby Kennedy's assertions about COVID. I know a Jewish person that died from COVID. I was very offended by it. Yeah, that, but I don't think it came from anti-Semitism. I think it came from him trying to seek the truth and getting a little too conspiratorial. It's an overstatement to say he's anti-Semitic. He's pro-Zionist, yeah, yeah. which I don't like, but I don't think he's anti-Semitic either. Um, and, then, yeah. and, and not only that, I have a personal bias. I admit it. I was part of Canova's campaign 2018 when he ran as an independent in South Florida oh, against yeah. Debbie Washington Schultz. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's she's definitely part of the Clinton mob. We know that. And so, you know, I, I was sympathetic, you could say, when I saw that recently on YouTube. That he had that exchange with with DWS, but I just I like ironies. I like historical ironies, and so to me it's it's comedic more than tragic. Like here we have a guy who comes from the most famous Democrat Party family, the yes. Kennedys, and you have far right Republicans like Chairman Jordan that are defending him from the censorship of the Democrats in a censorship hearing. Ooh. The topic of the hearing was censorship, and they were trying to censor Mr. Kennedy. I just thought it was comical. It, it is. It's it is. It's really comical to hear something like that. Like, Jesus Christ. And you have far-right people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's racist. I, I despise her. Oh, but I, I have to give her credit her. because she's one of the few that when they want to send more arms to the Nazis in Ukraine, says no. Yep. Where's the squad? Where are the so-called socialists? Where are the so-called left on these issues? It's only the far right to vote the right way it on these issues of libertarians. It and it's not that I like the far right libertarians again. But right. you have the cowardice of the squad. You have the cowardice of AOC because you're more interested about getting a Senate seat. We know that. Right. Um, and because of this cowardice, it's demoralizing the left. That's why the DSA needs to go into the revolutionary Greens, into Cornell West, and the ally with him. Yeah. Instead, the DSA is having this debate. The more bourgeois elements of the DSA is like, well, we need to stick with Biden. How are you going to stick with Biden and call yourself a socialist? You can't be a socialist without being an anti-imperialist. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I always say. How could you be anti-imperialist and support fucking Biden when he has ramped up the wars in some cases worse than Trump has? And you have people that still fixate on his strategic mistake. Colonel West is a human being. He makes mistakes. Okay, he shouldn't have ran first with the People's Party. We know that. But he ran. Now, he's running now with the with the party that's in at least thirty eight states. A lot right. more ballot access. Uh, and whenever they ask Dr. West, and I met him before, by the way, ten years ago. Uh, but whatever they ask Dr. West, you know, why are you running? He's very honest. He says, I want to dismantle the empire. Exactly. So how is me as an anti-imperialist who's known about West, you know, practically my whole life, uh, yep. you know, not going to support that? Even if he's not successful, we need somebody out there that's going to be heard uh, that's going to be, you know, and has been they, uh, firmly an anti-imperialist. They have they to have get have the, the message across. Message. And, and, and you're not going to do it with these bullshit parties. Like, it's just not going to be the case. It's just not going to be the case. Hey, give me one second. got to uh, pull up my computer, and I'll be right back. Oh, no problem. So, yeah, this is, this is going great.
See, I'm having my dinner because I came home from work and I started making, and I just, I was like so hungry. I just started, they just started making. By the way, behind me, comrade, is a poster of Assange and a letter from Alex Saab written to me oh, from wow. his Miami jail. That's really cool. That's what I see every day when I enter my room because we need to fight imperialism. Damn right. Either through diplomacy, through journalism, through publishing, through fighting for transparency, for fighting for human rights. That's yep. one thing. The bourgeoisie in the name of human rights are violating human rights in the name of humanitarianism yep. that the British did yep. in their old empire. Right. Are, are violating people's humanity. Look at Libya. Under Gaddafi, they were the most progressive, most economically stable country in the African continent. Yep. Yeah, exactly. uh, to the point where their GDP was even better than Russia at the time. Wow. And now you have open air slavery. And Obama himself admitted that his biggest mistake of his administration was getting behind the Libyan invasion. Do you know who was one of the hawks that convinced him to do it? Uh, Hillary Clinton. Yep. Yeah, we're talking about the Clinton mob. I mean, this is the right wing of the Democratic Party. This is Biden. This is this is what's going on. Yeah, it is. And you know that they're pulling the strings because fucking demented Biden ain't running the country. I mean, he's not running the He's not running. I think it's Camel Toe Harris that's running the show in all honesty. I feel like she's running the strings or Clinton is doing it or something. I don't know. It's hard to hear you, Conrad. You might want to speak closer to your mic. Oh, sorry. sorry. So, um, so I think... I feel like it's Camel Toe Harris that's running the show. I don't feel like it's even, I don't even think Biden's running because that dude can't even form a proper sentence. And he falls that's off. a new one. Her name does sound like kind of like Camel. You call yeah. her Camel Toe Harrison? I haven't heard that one. That's just one I met. Oh, no, Camel, Camel Toe Harris? <laughs> yep, that's what I call it. <laughs> that's an interesting her. nickname for her. Just like I call wow, I'm going to start using that. I have I'll give you kudos on Twitter for it, though. Yeah, we, <laughs> we need to do hashtag Camel Toe <laughs> Hashtag camel toe house. No, the feminists will kill us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, these it's fucking... All, it's all in the good spirits, though, of uh, revolutionary humor. Exactly. Dude, there needs to be revolutionary humor. I do it all the time with my stream. I do it all the time with my with my, with my, with my homies and my comrades on there, too. Like I'm not the biggest door fan who you know was uh, originally a comedian, but I am a Lee Camp fan, and he's a comedian. A lot of great comedians uh, in our history, like Oscar Wilde. Yeah. That's another thing. Oscar Wilde was known for his humor in Britain. Mm. But you have to remember, he was an Irish immigrant. Oh, yeah. So he was actually Irish. I actually right. saw the Irish were radicals that were living in Britain as well. They were being discriminated against. Oh. I actually went to see Jimmy Dore and, um, with my boyfriend on um, May 28th of this year. He was actually pretty good, actually. He was actually real funny. He's still doing comedy acts, or he was doing a political show? Uh, no, he was doing – no, no, no. no. It, was, it, was, it was comedy. He was doing oh, okay. it. Was but a lot of it's political humor, no? Yeah, it was mostly that, but he was saying other stuff too. He 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 was at the Academy of Music in Northampton, Mass, which is like an hour and forty-two hours from west of where I'm at, which is in Essex County, Mass. So I went to see. He was pretty good, actually. I mean, well, this face was on the front page of the Boston Herald in 2011, alongside my comrades with my mugshot. We were arrested at Occupy. Oh yeah, that's right. Because you. You? I'm originally from Boston. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, that's yeah, really that's cool. Cool. And I was a bold activist before that, too. When we were first intervening in Afghanistan, I was a standing rock. I was a water protector. I wasn't just an embassy protector in Washington, D.C. Wow. Uh, so, you know, when people attack me, it's like, you know, or what are you going to do about it kind of thing? It's like, I love to respond. Or they say, why don't you go there? Why don't you go to Cuba? Why don't you go to Venezuela? Well, I've been to both those countries, and I do something about what I believe for 20-plus years now. You want to so try yeah. saying that to me, right? Exactly. <laughs> saying that to you. They, they say the same thing. I might shit look younger, but I'm in my late 30s, brother. I've been in the struggle since mm -hmm. I was a teenager. I'm 26. <laughs> I'm going to be 27 in 20 days from today. And Good for you, brother. I've had even. Thank, thanks, bro. I appreciate thanks, bro. it. I've had people in my family say, why don't you go to Cuba? Why don't you go to Venezuela? I've even had some I was in Cuba in 2017. Stuff. I've been there. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's the same you know, my grand... It's not perfect. It's actually but the people are watching Cuba. Cuba. My grandfather, who was more like a centrist, he's defended Cuba and said they have amazing medicine and everything else, all this technology, which they do. Which they, which they do. And, and their revolution, they did. It, 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 they achieved so much. They have achieved so much. You know who sold out 
I met Michael Moore. I used to like him. He's even done work in Cuba. Oh, yeah. But now Michael Moore is, you know, pro-Biden. It's unfortunate. You see these radical voices that become more moderate later. Yeah, same with that. Uh, ever, uh, become moderate. Yeah, same with that uh, fucking Sean Penn. Remember when Sean Penn was Sean friends, Penn with, was friends with Hugo Chavez? Yeah, exactly. Was that and, that and, and now, and now he's the lapdog for Zelensky. Now he's the lapdog of the of the of the fucking Nazi gym teacher. Actually, that's my other name. I call I call him the fucking gym teacher because he's dressed. That's up a new one. He, I'm gonna get a lot of material from you, man. Thanks. I'll put Brad. it like in an article or something. Oh, you will. <laughs> my blog. I call him. Oh, thank you. Dude, I'll dude. give you kudos, though. Spread me anywhere. Spread me anywhere you'd like about my work and stuff. I really appreciate it. But yeah, no, I call him the gym teacher. Because it, 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 it's like, how the fuck do people expect to take us to take him seriously? He needs to dress up in his fucking gym teacher. Looks like he's a broken gym teacher that got drunk. And went to teach kids in the gym class the next. Well, you know, you know, Zelensky's a cokehead too, right? You yeah. know that. And, I'm and, not and, and not only that, um, you know, Hunter Biden was a lot of parties in Ukraine. Yep. That's the thing. The Democrats, a lot of his projection. I'm not saying Trump's innocent, but uh, you know, oh. like for example, uh, and by the way, the first impeachment against Trump, I was against because it was very, very soft. Like he made a phone call to Ukraine, so what? Mm. Right. The insurrection is a different matter. But, you know, like they would say things like, oh, Trump was blackmailed by Putin because he was in a party in Moscow or whatever. Oh, Think God. about all the parties in Kiev that Hunter Biden took part in. Yeah. And remember, Hunter Biden is a cokehead, too. We know that. Oh, so okay. I wouldn't be surprised. He's got pictures with piles of coke with Zelensky and parties and, and other sex workers. I better say sex workers than prostitutes in Ukraine. So who's that to say that the Bidens were being uh, blackmailed as well? I and bet there's more evidence of that. It. Like, you know, th th they claim now Russian interference, blah, blah, blah. The Mueller report proved it wasn't true. And all of them say, wait till the Mueller report comes out. We're going to be vindicated. <laughs> they weren't, and they're still repeating that crap. They just repeated that crap at the censorship hearing I was mentioning. Of course they did. Uh, so, repeating. you know, there's no evidence for that. What there is evidence for is that probably the Ukrainians tried to blackmail the Bidens. And there's evidence of the Uranium One deal. Hmm. What was it? One third of all our, our uranium was sold to Russia because Putin made some bribes to the Clinton Foundation. And the Clintons facilitated the selling of uranium. What's uranium made for? A lot of the uranium comes from Africa, by the way, too. They might intervene now in Burkina Faso because they don't want some uranium yeah. to France anymore or gold. That reminds um, me but that. Uh, yeah. uranium is used to make nuclear weapons. Talking about Oppenheimer, right? Mm. And so uh, that's a treason. That's a treason. You take money from a foreign government via your foundation to influence your policy to help send uranium to make more Russian weapons. That's a treason. And so we know from Assange and the WikiLeaks uh, revelations that the way that Clinton's handled this when Clinton was running in 2016 yep. was saying, well, let's make Trump look pro-Putin. And they did it as a smokescreen, as a distraction. Yeah, yeah. So it was. all of this was, was the Podesta emails. It was all exposed. And because of that, they went after Assange. Because the journalist, the act of publishing truthful information. Because Trump was against every ally of Putin. He bombed Syria not once but twice. He put the sanctions campaign that Obama started with Venezuela and Cuba on um, in Syria and Iran and North Korea on steroids and human growth hormones. So, you know, RT, people say I've been on RT once, right? Yeah. It's actually not true. I was on RT twice. They interviewed me once. Oh. But uh, before Russia State TV got shut down, I was on it in 2016. You know what I was doing in 2016 being filmed by RT? Hmm. I was in Philly at the DNC pushing the gates. It shows me pushing the gates. Wow. <laughs> because I was there not as a Democrat. I've never been a Democrat. No. Really. I was there as a Green Party socialist. Yep. yep. Recruiting people. It was the easiest political job I ever did. Recruiting people to Jill Stein and, and, and Baracus camp. Yeah. I was there with Sherry Hunkel uh, with Jill Stein's first VP, who's from Philly. Well, lives in Philly. To be fair, um, and, yeah. uh, you know, it was the easiest job ever because they all felt sold out by Biden, but not Biden. They all felt sold out by Bernie. Oh, yeah. Or they felt that at least Bernie was coerced to do what he did. And they said, there's no way we're going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And so they were literally running into the arms of Joe Stein. Easiest political job I ever did. <laughs> and yeah. we we're pissed about the, uh, the, the arrest of Sherry Hunkel. I got people so riled up that they arrested Sherry Hunkel outside the Damn. gates of the DNC that they were pushing the gates. And I said, what the hell? I'll do it, too. Yeah. And then RT started filming me, and it came out later. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was cool. we take it down, too. But yeah. No, I love RT. I look up a lot of stuff about RT all the time. Sputnik, Press TV. I really well, I go on Sputnik all the time. I was just on Sputnik with uh, Garland Nixon the other day talking about Venezuela. Sputnik is awesome. You know, funny enough, one of my uh, one of my 
dear comrades on this on uh, YouTube. His name is Nicholas. And he, uh, when I was talking about Sputnik, he said, Sputnik, my network. His name is Nick. So he's like, oh, Sputnik, or Nick, my network. <laughs> yeah. So that well, it's was the last Russian outlet in the United States, that, in the U.S. Empire, that hasn't been shut down. Mm. Their radio, they're still going on. They're still strong in D.C. Well, I'll have to listen to them because it's like, I, yeah. And, and I actually wanted to, if I could, to be back to saying about Putin, like, are there things I disagree with Putin on? Yeah, maybe on like social issues or some things like that. But no, I, and in theory, Lee Camp has the same position. I think you know, Chris Hedges does as well. And it's like about how, oh, like we might be opposed to the invasion per se, but we can understand why Putin is doing what he's doing. I can totally, like I said, in the beginning, I used to think Putin was this evil guy who was invading countries. But By now the way, I, would, I don't call it invasion anymore. Yeah. I don't it, necessarily call it liberation either because if you're not yeah, exactly. ethically Russian and Ukraine, you don't feel liberated. You know, what I just, call it now is what the Russian government had called it, not because I'm parroting them, but because I believe this is true. It is a special yeah. military operation. It is a special military. I mean, uh, Brian Berletic from, uh, intervention. from the Brian Berletic from the New Atlas that I'm a big fan of. I don't know if you ever seen. I don't know if you ever seen uh, the New Atlas, but the New Atlas is really good with Brian Berletic. DM me, DM me some stuff on that. Oh yeah, Brian Berletic is really good. I really like him. He um he calls it the special military operation. I'm surprised the gray zone doesn't because Aaron Mate still calls it the an invasion. I'm like what? Because it, it is. It's a liberation because they were Let not. Let me tell you something. Russia. The biggest one of the biggest scandals. Uh-huh. Where I was very vocally supportive of Aramante. I still like him. Oh yeah. Um, oh, and I've been in touch with him and his father, by the way, too. But but Aramante, um, whose father is a Holocaust survivor, by the way. His father was called anti-Semitic at his events for his views over Palestine. Oh my god. And they weren't mentioning that he actually survived the Holocaust. Like, yeah. what the hell are you talking about? How the but anyway, Aramante. And they said the same thing about Finkelstein, whose parents were Holocaust survivors. We know that. Uh, I've met Finkelstein. But you know, with the biggest scandal with Monte, where I actually came out really strongly in favor of him was when TYT, this Armenian girl, I can't even think of her name right now. Uh, Anna Kasparian? Yeah. So this Armenian girl, who so-called journo, um, who's literally on a network with the same name of people that genocided the Armenians, the yeah, yeah. Turks. Yeah, yeah, fuck Ellen um, That's, yeah, that's fuck. how sellout she is. But, you know, this Kasparian woman, uh, I don't want to say girl in case they feminist attack, but to me she's not a serious woman journalist at all. Yeah. But this Kasparian woman, you know, she, uh, you know, came out and, and you know, and, and attacked Aaron Monte for defending Jimmy Dore. And again, not the biggest Dore fan, but it was not true. We know that from the email. She emailed Dore and said, I'm going to make up that you sexually harass me yeah. if you keep criticizing us. No, I remember seeing And then she went ahead and did, even though she was caught, even though Dore showed the screenshots. It was indisputable. Oh, yeah, and so that, when Monte yeah. came to his defense, she said, oh, you're a defender of genocide in Syria. Are you kidding me? She literally sucked up to Margaret, not Margaret Thatcher, uh, Madeleine Albright. Madeleine Albright. So the mainstream media, what I call lamestream media, Lame did a better media. job of questioning over the 500,000 Iraqi children's death yeah. than the Kasparian did sucking up to Madeleine Albright, who that, is an actual genocider. That, and, yeah, she is. And here we have Aaron Monte, Serbia. who was raised by a father in Canada who is a survivor of a genocide, saying that he... And it's ironic because she's descended from gen- genocide victims as well, Armenia, saying that he's supporting genocide in Syria for saying certain truths. And he's been to Syria, by the way, Aaron Mate. Yep, he has. He's done a lot of good work. And so when that came he out, has. I was outraged. And I, I came on in defense of him. Yep, same here. I actually didn't even know that much about the gray zone up until like a few years ago. And I think that was when I really started diving into my stuff with my YouTube channel and whatnot. But yeah, that was definitely that. I remember coming out and saying that. I didn't even know who Aaron Mate was at the time. But it was, but yeah, I know. I remember seeing that. And Larry Bonte used to work for Democracy Now, who still does some good work. Yeah. But their positions on Syria were terrible. And so he resigned and ended up joining Gray Zone instead. Yeah. Which is going on. at one point was yeah, critical yeah. of Todd. But yeah. he, he, he changed his, his views over time. Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying Assad's a saint either, but the alternatives are mostly extremists. Ben Norton. Because of course, you know, extremists a lot of time they sell it to the United States. Oh, yeah. Ben Norton and our, uh, no, Max Blumenthal. Not just were, in the Middle East and Latin America, yeah. right? They, yeah. Guaido is an extremist. Uh, Machado as well, who we mentioned earlier. Mm. Oh, yeah. I wanted to add one thing. Uh, ben Norton and uh, Max Blumenthal, they were both anti Assad for a great number of years. And look I didn't them. know that about Ben. Yeah. I was ben ben about said Max, a lot yeah. of things like, 
like you can be against U.S. intervention and be against a dictator. Like you can do both or something. And it was on Twitter. Okay. Back there. I, I got to go soon, but I want to just mention the full name of Machado. Oh yeah. If people want to look her up, and like Venezuela Analysis is a good uh, leftist uh, uh, outlet. That's yeah, in English that's true, yeah. uh, about Venezuela. You can learn about her. Um, and her name is Maria Corina Machado. Mm. Um, but, you know, the commissions who are independent from the government that decide who could run and who can't. Who yeah. are we to meddle or judge? Who they say mm-hmm. can run and who can't, especially the EU of all places where complete sellouts. Mm. You know, they have a very transparent democratic system down there. I can get into oh, an yeah. interview with you of why that is and what I witnessed. But, you know. Our elections are ridiculous. They're stolen. Primaries are stolen. Oh, uh, you Bush know, you have the Clinton mob, the Washington Schultz mob. The Bushes. Nova. I know that. I was part of his campaign. And this is what goes on, you know. So, and it actually results in a lot of people turning to the right. You know, I'm not a right winger by any means. Oh, yeah. You could argue that Nova's turned to the right. But uh, I understand why he has. I'm not saying, I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying I agree with him. I understand why. Because a lot of people perceive the Democrats as the left. I don't see them as that. I see them yeah. as an extension of the right. Um, and as a result of that, they turned to oh. the other way, and that's unfortunate. But there yeah. is rigging. And for me, oh. Bernie's not even a real leftist. But yeah, yeah. there was rigging against yeah. Bernie. The Anybody slightly is. to the left of center, they're, they're attacked by the federal government. Mm-hmm. They attacked Gillum when he ran for governor of Florida. Yeah. They're attacking Uhuru now out of St. Petersburg, Florida, out of St. Pete that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. As, especially if you're a person of color or from a oppressed nation. If you're slightly left to the center, the government will go after you. Yeah, but- um, and we have to rise up. It was like the year anniversary of the Hurus getting arrested, correct? It was fairly recent. I don't know if it was the anniversary, but it was about a year uh, bef- uh, when they were raided their – a year after they raided their headquarters. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a year the that they raided the it was, it was actually a week before uh, they raided uh, Mar-a-Lago, interestingly enough. Yeah, because I Florida. saw – yeah, because I saw uh, Lee Camp did this on his channel. Yeah, I remember seeing him. He did it on He did it on his channel. I remember seeing that. Was he on Men Pre- No, no, he he does his own show now because he's not on Men Press anymore. But um, well, when I when I was on Lee Camp show, it was via Men Press because Lee is working with Men Press, so right. Men Press is doing a lot of good work. Oh yeah, Men- I met the founder I of Men Press when I was in Venezuela as well. Oh, I love Men Press. Men Press is one of my favorites. Men Press is awesome. Alan McLeod. Men Press, Venezuela analysis, Telestore English. Yeah, Telesaur. These are great I outlets to learn Telesaur. the truth of Alex Saab and other cases yep. that we've mentioned. Absolutely. I love Telesaur. Telesaur is awesome. I love them, too. Uh, th- them, I love... Yeah, I mean, I think the Gray Zone is definitely up there on my top list. The new Atlas. I love Richard Medhurst. Richard Medhurst is really good. Jeffrey Sachs is another one. Richard, Med- Richard Medhurst is half Syrian, I believe, or half Lebanese. Yeah, he yeah, has he's half in the Middle East. Syrian and half English. Yeah, yeah. He's got Syrian origins, so he has authority to speak down there. He has heritage he, there. Yeah, I believe both his parents are diplomats. He's awesome. Um, but yeah, I want to go on a future show with you talk more about the Alex Saab case. Uh, what yeah. was the other thing I said I wanted to talk more about? Uh, oh, yeah, the Venezuelan system. I would love to get in that as well. Um, oh, but I really got to get going. It's been a pleasure. Let me tell people how they can find me. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, you are a so writer, activist. You can go on Twitter. I am censored on other outlets, but you can still go on my Twitter. Yep. And you see, you should see my name here. Can you make my screen bigger? Um, hang on one second. Uh, yes, I'm gonna make yours a little bit bigger. Yep. I don't know if that way it shows the name. I'll just say it. So my name on Twitter is Al R Suarez. So that's A L middle initial R without the period and Suarez like Juarez Mexico without the J. Yep. S U A R E Z. Thank you, comrades. Oh, thank you, uh, thank you uh, so much for coming on my show. Because yeah. And when you said about being censored, I'm sen- I mean, I've been censored before. Episode 116 of my live stream was uh, destroyed by government sanctions because some imperialist bitch on YouTube decided to flag it for hate speech, and it got you know banned around the world. So we that happened, and and I've had videos age restricted. I mean, we've all been yeah. It's just this is what happens. You know that they they don't do this to you unless they they're telling the truth. And I am it was an honor to have you on my show. And I'm going to credit you. You're a writer, activist, and journalist, correct? Are those are those your three? And uh, historian. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to write that down as well. Historian. I'm going to write that down as well. Writer, a writer, activist, journalist, and historian. Twitter is A L R Soros. Correct. Let me paraphrase Marx to leave. This is not planned. This is spontaneous. So mm-hmm. paraphrasing Marx, he said, "There are those who study history, but there are those who strive to change it." Oh, yeah. Very, yeah, very well said. That's what we must do, comrade.
Yep. We should. Very well said. And um, I can't wait to have you. One person being at the... Hang on, your screen froze. Sorry, his screen is like messing up. I can't hear you. Your uh, your screen is breaking up. Oh yeah. But um, but yeah, man, I'm very happy that you came on my show today. It was okay. I can't see his screen now. I don't know if it like cut out or something or what is going on. Yeah, cause you're. Uh... Wait a minute, your uh, your screen is cutting out. I can't hear you. But um, it's all good. But yeah, I know he had to go. So um, I know he um, I know that he um, had to go. Let me. Wait. <laughs> Your screen was coming. Yeah, but yeah, we will definitely be. Yeah, um, we will definitely be uh, coordinating a lot more soon. I don't know what was going on with regards to that. I think it was something to do with his screen or whatever, but anyway, I know he had to, um, anyway, I know he had to head out, so, um, but yeah, so anyway, this was a very special, this was a very, very special, uh, episode that I did, it, it was more like a global report, but it was more like an interview, so I will definitely be doing this with Alex, uh, more often, this was a great conversation I had with my comrade, Alex Sorez. I gave you guys exactly what I promised, and um, so, so yeah, you can find Alex Suarez on Twitter. I will definitely be linking his Twitter below. I will be linking him. I, I will be crediting him. He's a writer, activist, journalist, and he's a historian. He has ties with Lee Camp. He has ties with Ben Norton. It is a pleasure to talk to him. It was a pleasure to talk with him and to get to collab with him. He's a great guy. I mean, I'm sorry for the cutout and stuff at the end there, but I think... I think it was just something that happened. It was more on his end. But no, this was a great conversation, and I was very happy to have him on. And thank you all for watching. Hope you all watch this until the end because this was a great conversation. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'll be back on Tuesday with my next stream at uh, 7 p.m. Look out for it. More stuff on the way. This is Zach, the Solis guy, saying thank you for watching, and thank you, comrade Alex Suarez, for joining. Thank you, everyone else, for joining. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Till the next one, stay safe, stay well, stay classy, and as always, keep fighting and keep on rocking. Till next time, good night, peace out, have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday. Take care of yourselves and all of each other. Good night, everybody. Peace out and so long.